Mercedes have told me take the all new Mercedes AMG here in Thomas Blue this morning here and tell us later if you find this one better than the Porsche 911. Well, we're going to find out here with Thomas Nautigefühl in 4K, full screen, full length. Let's go with the all new generation of the AMG GT. beautiful matte color. You can even hear it that it is matte. It's called a spectral blue magno. Yeah, definitely a looker, right? Of course, you can also go for different colors. For example, we have a high-tech silver car for you or a Patagonia red, just two choices. Then the huge Panamericana front grille here lower in the bottom part, vertical AMG fins, so a very aggressive look. And new headlamps, of course, digital light. This is then for more high beam performance. Towards the side profile, 4 meters 73 or 186 inches is the length now. If we compare the predecessor, that is now 18 centimeters or 7 inches longer than the predecessor. So massive gain in length and also new 2 plus 2 seater concept on the inside. We'll soon find out more about that. Wheels 20 inch or here 21 inch, the bigger ones with a nice aerodynamic optimization in this ring here. Brake catapults here in black, but you can also get, for example, yellow ones. And later on, you will also be able to order the carbon ceramic brakes. A very sleek look here at the rear because they work with active aerodynamics. Soon going to show you how this rear wing spectacularly lifts up. You can, of course, also go for an alternative fixed ring. That's a really large one if you want a very loud look, but this one is definitely the more elegant solution. Suspension-wise, interesting. It's an active suspension with hydraulics and in the sport mode goes stiffer and also works with the entire uh, roll control. So they're all connected. It's like this whole hydraulic system and then they can actually pump more hydraulics to one side to make it stiffer and the car stays upright. Very interesting. In the lower part here, visually, black contrast, really large and out of fake exhaust police alert because here the outer tips are fake, real exhaust on the inside. And technology-wise, also very interesting. Comes as standard here for this one. The rear axle steering up to 2.5 degrees. The rear wheels can turn in the opposite direction at lower speeds. But here the threshold is 1 km an hour or 60 miles an hour. So even at that speed, you still get more agility. Above that, it steers in the parallel direction for more stability. And now, spoiler alert. In this case, literally. Are you team spoiler or are you team non-spoiler? Tell me in the comments. Turning indicators, we have here this three-dot structure in the front. And turning indicators here in the rear, underneath the normal lamps, really wide. And here at the steering wheel, I can activate the lift function. Then the front of the vehicle is being lifted three centimeters. That's a helpful function for a basement garage or something, or where you have like some steep exits or entries to not damage the vehicle. And what we also have is active aerodynamics here underneath the vehicle in the front. This is extending and this actually gives you more downforce in the front without having a negative effect on the rear. This is very interesting. And the second part of the active aerodynamics we find here at the rear that looks really spectacular, doesn't it? So I can also activate or deactivate it from the interior at the steering wheel. However, it's also deploying automatically at certain speeds. This is the key fob. Feels kind of cool. AMG logo. Then the door handles here. You slide them and then they come out. To me, it's always just more complicated, you know. So sometimes you easily want to get in the vehicle then you have to wait for that. Or what do you think about that? Door closing sound is not that good. It's frameless though. Some rare vehicles have good sounds when they have frameless doors. Then inside of the doors, everything is not with black plastic, also in the lower part, also inside of the door pockets and so on. Then a lot of high gloss black piano lacquer, we know that. Here the seat control for heating and cooling, for example. Then we have a fat AMG entry badge right here. And of course the AMG steering wheel with 
two horizontal spokes. This, once again, the hashtag capacitive BS controls on the steering wheel. But cooler are these ones here, so the buttons where I can activate the rear wing, for example. Seats, these are the normal sport seats. However, you can also get optional performance sport seats, further bolstering in the shoulder area, and they are also available with micro-cut microfiber. These ones here only with animal skin, sadly. Here the headroom with 189 or 6 for 2, still some headroom left. This one here is just a manual shade for this glass roof here, that's it. But yeah, I mean, the manual one is actually quite cool. It's just that you cannot open that and therefore you also have just this blind area where you usually open the panoramic roofs. And I did take a test right here with the performance seats for you. So indeed, the seat material is more comfortable and racier and also more breathable, but the seat itself is indeed much stiffer so the comfort then is better with the standard seat. AMG needs to offer also the standard seat with the microfiber that would be the best combination. In the cockpit overview we today film from the <laughs> from the passenger door because it's really impossible even for Michelle to fit in the rear. Then here you can see these air vents are pretty cool, turbine style and with clicking sound as well. That's nice. Illumination on the inside here. You can already see something from the ambient lighting. That's pretty cool. Then there's a vertical screen. Middle console. You can slide this one open for cup holders and the inductive charging pad as well as USB-C charging. And here in the middle console, more USB-C charging, more space. Nice clicking sound. And then there's command central. I like the shifting pedals. So they're really massive as well. You start, stop, the engine here is kind of like hidden, this button. And then the digital instruments, where you also have different stylings available, the classic ones, or for example, also sport and super sport styling. And you also have a head-up display where you can also change to different view modes. Infotainment system, temperature control is always in the lower part here. For a digital control, it's actually quite okay. And the speed of the system is actually also decent. Then here you have special performance gauges, for example, where you can take a look at the engine performance. This is here the IWC watch animation. And then you can use this one here, for example, as a start-stop watch. There we go. And last but not least, you have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, wired or wireless, you can choose that. The activation of this new European speed limiter warning is here in the infotainment system or press and hold the mute button a short while. So what I now did is move the passenger seat that way forward that it's you know like still possible for me to sit here because I want to know, obviously you can't drive it with four tall adults, but can you drive it with three tall adults at least? So here we lift up this strap here, well, with, like we go. Then it goes forward electronically a little bit. Take a look at the rear. So it's like this small hole, <laughs> I would say. There's Isofix, however, so you can install child seats there, so that is possible. Of course, also like some additional storage, and then let me go inside. There we go. So behind the driver's seat, there is no space at all, basically, so I can definitely not sit here. Um, and also here, I mean, yeah, <laughs> there is no headroom at all, so you see, no, this doesn't even work for small, it's child seat or storage, that's it. And even if I put the seat backward like this, so even that doesn't work. So no, not at all. This is pure emergency seat, but yeah, I'm not sure. Like maybe 115 meters, 150 uh, maximum or something. However, it makes the trunk more versatile. And here we have 320 up to 675 liters. That's very interesting. So you either have just a wall here, it looks similar, and then you don't have the seat bench option, or you go for the seat bench option, and then you can actually fold that thing right here. There we go. But then you see it kind of gets stuck there, so I have to move my driver's seat forward in order that the rear bench can fold. But then, of course, I don't have much space left in the front. That's the thing. But here I can let it fall down and then move the seat backwards again. So that is a possibility. But then you have to say, for such a sporty vehicle, the trunk is kind of versatile. Here the width is about 80 centimeters or 31 inches. And the normal length is like 90 centimeters, 35 inches. And the total length then here to the front seat, this is more like 150 in meters or 59 inches. So 
yeah, definitely more versatile if you go for the seat bench option. So I just said I had to move the seat forward in order to let that fold. Then I moved it backwards again. And yes, it goes backwards enough that I can still comfortably sit in the front. Under the hood, ta-da, a 4-liter V8 bi-turbo, 585 horsepower here in the 63 version. 3.2 seconds is the acceleration figure. There will also be a 55 version that is somewhat similar as for the equipment, just a little bit lower in horsepower, 476 horsepower then and 3.9 seconds in the acceleration figure. And we also expect a hybrid drivetrain and maybe some something like an entry version, but here the 63 is once again the pinnacle. Welcome to Thomas's performance driving lounge. Let's go to the Sport Plus mode and launch that a little bit slightly uphill with the race start. Oh, that's 100 kilometers an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yes, bro. Ah, awesome. What the hell? Woo! I mean, this is this vehicle is like a transformer. I mean, at one point, it's it's this really fairly comfortable GT and then suddenly it becomes this machine, this, this, this racing machine. Wow, this is super impressive. And here also in the Sport Plus mode, the suspension is a little bit stiffer, gives me more feedback. AMG Active Ride Control. It also features anti-tilt control and that means that when I'm here in the corner, for example, in the right corner, the left dampers are being made stiffer by hydraulic systems. They're, they're like all there connected. It's a very interesting system where then hydraulic is being distributed. And that's why I don't have any leaning to the sides at all. At the same time, the suspension is not super rough or something, you know, because we always have to differentiate between sporty and rough suspensions. And this one here, it actually gives you decent comfort. So. Um, of course, at the moment, the roads are also good. Testing these later on. And what I also feel is that the vehicle feels relatively light, you know, as um, when we think about like the assistance systems and so on, it gives you room to play. So especially in the Sport Plus mode, that should be reserved for experienced drivers. If you really know the vehicle, if you have got some experience with the vehicle and know what you're doing because then all the electronic helper systems are being drawn back and I feel I can pretty much loosely control the vehicle. Wow, beautiful roads here also, close to the Sierra Nevada, not in the US, but in southern Spain. Oh, and that V8 sound here is also lovely. Wow, what a great handling. The steering is also crisp and precise, good feedback, I have a great control over the vehicle. Wow, and yeah, one of the first expectations, <laughs> great shifting back, wow, look at that, this is awesome. Ah, a little bit sliding out here, yeah, just the small movements, you can very well control the vehicle, you are in control, but it lets you play with it. <laughs> wow, this is amazing, and also, what a step forward in comparison to the previous generation. This one here is sportier and more comfortable at the same time. And it's really, very, very rare that you can achieve something like that for a vehicle, right? So that is something. By the way, if you want a little bit more control, but at the same time still want sporty feeling, Sport mode is just more than enough, definitely also for public roads, so I'd, I'd rather recommend that for public roads. You can always use the shifting pedals yourself and then uh, shift down yourself, for example, if you want you know, better shifting movement, for example. So that's always possible. And they've really worked here with the steering setup, so we see that with all new generations of the Mercedes vehicles, that the steering is just better really precise, sporty, at the same time it doesn't lose comfort. Here of course first time with the all-wheel drive, 
which is a good thing for attraction and at the same time you don't lose this rear wheel bias you know so even in that race start they predominantly send all the power to the rear wheels and just if there is some kind of wheel spin then also power is sent to the front so the power that is sent to the front is not that huge that it doesn't lose its characteristic and maximum would actually be 50 50 um, so 50 rear 50 front but that's once again only when you really lose the traction in the rear when so much power can also be put to the front wheels so this is more or less still a rear driven vehicle you can also go for special mode to really just have rear drive like in drift mode but you actually don't need that most of the time you just leave it in these in these normal modes and it's it's absolutely fine with that one more time guys and look here at the graphic also in the central display <laughs> ah, wow this is just amazing wow and so controlled also this race start i love that so this sporty feeling initially said can this be a real challenger to the 911 now also with the rear bench concept and so on and on the sporty side definitely yes definitely you know that the direct one would be the 911 turbo um maybe not quite the s but i mean like, this is like point something of seconds difference than the acceleration you can also take this one here as a 911 Turbo S competitor, no doubt about that. And then you can also put it to comfort mode, for example, and it becomes this cruiser, you know, it's a little bit calmer then, of course, from the exhaust and so on. The steering is still crisp and sporty and you're just hooking up to the road a little bit better. Here, when you shift down yourself or when the gear goes down, then it comes to life immediately and you can also very comfortably cruise it for example here i mean this really attacking the roads i would not always do that you know so this is also cool that you drive sporty but not in the most extreme way of course always safety first thinking here about that in public roads and you can really enjoy that i'm really a fan of the suspension it still gives you comfort it's not that rough and also the steering setup and so on that's so cool Wow, so you can use this here as a true Grand Tourer that works very well. And I feel that in the comfort, it even delivers more than an i11. So indeed, I have to say, if you ask me right now, would you go for 911 or would you take this one here, the new Mercedes AMG GT, would be this one here for me. And of course, you are very welcome to compare our Porsche 911 episodes and tell me what you think or check out the different color here of the new AMG GT.